what's up guys so today I just want to go over a topic that is pretty interesting has, has been um, a topic of interest in bodybuilding circles for plenty plenty years been around and that topic is IGF-1 particularly IGF-1 LR3 and its supposed cell differentiation and um, site enhancing properties basically to my um i've done a lot of research on this topic um you know igf1 lr3 is supposed to be um a godsend basically <laughs> like a lot of guys want to put it like that um in the in terms that it can you know you 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 inject it in a certain site and it can increase um muscle muscle cell volume by cell proliferation and later cell different cell differentiation so cell proliferation is the creation of new new cells uh, particularly stem cells and then cell differentiation is whenever those new cells differentiate or basically turn into uh, different types of cells in the body there are a couple different types of cells in the body but namely the one that we are going to be interested in is um, muscle cells or myoblasts if you will um, so basically there's there's a good bit a good bit of research on this topic in particular um, IGF-1 LR3 and um, cell differentiation and everything and the consensus seems to be that um, exogenous IGF-1 LR3 you know that's the one that you inject when injected into a, a muscle group or what have you does not actually lead to cell differentiation or cell proliferation at the site that is injected. What causes this, um, IGF-1 does cause this in, particularly, in particular, but what actually causes this is the IGF-1 that is produced in that local muscle cell. So that's not something that you can exogenously, exogenous, whatever I fucking said it, exogenously change um, by by just um, exogenous use of LR, IGF-1, LR3, or any other form of IGF, IGF-1. Um, this is actually what can and has been shown to actually produce this though is um, using larger um, larger amounts of growth hormone or let's say growth hormone an analogs, GHRPs, CJCs, that sort of thing. So what they have what they have shown um, there are plenty of studies on this by the way. By um, if you go to that be true. That's the, the name of a, a guy who's pretty well known in the bodybuilding circles. Um, you check out his his forums. He has plenty of research and articles posted with all the all the source informations for these types of things. So I'm not really gonna get into you know providing proof in in the description box or anything. You can kind of do that on your own. It should be pretty easy to find. Uh, but basically, the gist of it is that they found increased amounts of growth hormone um, exogenous you know using exogenous growth hormone or whatever will allow those will allow the certain muscle groups to to excrete more igf1 locally which in turn causes more localized growth okay so um that's basically all i really wanted to cover um again resummarizing igf1 lr3 when injected exogenously in a muscle does not cause any cell proliferation or any cell differentiation has not been shown to cause that what does cause that is the igf1 that is secreted locally by those muscles whenever they undergo undergo muscle protein synthesis and this can be the amount of this igf1 can be increased by increased increased amounts of growth hormone in the body um, increased amounts of growth hormone caused by um, exogenous growth hormone use or uh, secretic secreticog uh, secretic whatever secreticog peptides um, can increase this IGF one and th and thus cause more localized cell growth. Um, there's also another another uh, peptide of, of of interest in this kind of manner is MGF which um, is also known as mechanical growth factor. And this, uh, there is some research on that be true regarding this peptide. It seems to be um, that this peptide actually does cause a bit of cell proliferation, which um, mainly makes it useful for healing injury, things like injuries. Um, it increases collagen synthesis 
and that is something that you can use locally uh, locally in the area that be true has uh, researched himself himself about using it um, in an area just using micro injections and has noticed um, um, I think it was used on burn victims in one of the studies and they used it uh, small small localized injections um, but many injections and it actually ended up over a period of time I forget the, the time span it ended up producing new new skin cells over time so that's again um, a big topic of popular research now um, you know more people are looking into that and that the particular properties of that peptide so you know in its potential use in bodybuilding um, and then another uh, popular to topic that should be that should really um, be brought to the forefront in the bodybuilding community and I've discussed this in a previous video also is the effect of insulin and growth hormone and their supposed synergistic effects which are actually um, inhibitory effects of each other once fatty acid lipolysis is um, is activated by growth hormone um, the um, insulin insulin resistance increases and there is less um, less carbohydrate shuttling available through um, the, pa the biochemical pathways of insulin um, but you can check out my other video where I briefly went over that I do want to get back to a more detailed um, video with that um, perhaps interview um, someone who knows a bit more about that subject than me um, but again this is pretty new material there's not much research on it um, you know if that's something that interests you guys let me know and I'll try to try to move on that but anyways this is just um, been another informative topic in the world of bodybuilding if you guys have any kind of questions or topics like that that you want me to discuss that is not going to send me to jail feel free to um, shoot me an email or talk about it in the description or uh, in the comments below and I'll get back to you guys okay peace out bye